All right, with that, Mark. welcome to our new intro. <laughs> <laughs> Midday, spicing it up. Boom! What are you doing here? Bam, bam. Ooh, this is going to wake you up in the morning from now on. I think this is going to yeah, be good. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> Get the blood pumping, it just pops in case. Some eardrums. How do I Eggs. happy Tuesday on top of that, man? Jew. Right. <laughs> you got you to gotta come up with something unique for Wednesdays now. This is yeah. a Wednesday. This is midday. Yeah, yeah it is. But, 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 eh. <laughs> words. <laughs> They're it's... just as good in the afternoon as they are in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let's jump into our topic today. We're, there's no intros. We're jumping right into it. Uh, today, we are privileged to have with us Charles Webb. Charles, welcome to the podcast. Charles Webb is a product manager. If I hope I'm getting that right. Product manager of the Microsoft product team, specifically around Data Marts. Data Marts came out. Oh, uh, man, it was announced last end of last year, I think is what I, if I remember the timing frame, right? Or is that beginning of this year? Yeah, it was announced at Build, like late Build, May. it was announced. That was the beginning of this year. So announced at Build, it is here. It is a great feature set. And we've already had a couple podcasts on talking through where do these things fit? Where are they? How are they going to fit into the ecosystem here? So this is an opportunity for us and the community. Ask questions. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. For anyone who wants to ask questions directly to Charles, uh, please put them in the uh, YouTube or LinkedIn chat areas. We'll uh, grab them, we'll funnel them back to Charles and, and kind of bundle common ideas and themes together. And with that, Charles, go ahead and give us an introduction. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Um, definitely really appreciate it. And you know, data marts are something that our whole team has been really, really excited to release to customers. And it really started with uh, all of your feedback here in the community. So very much appreciate that. Um, and yeah, let's just jump right in. What awesome. Want, where should we start, Mike? Tommy? Yeah. So let's do just kind of a, a little. Uh, let's let's do an intro, like a quick 101. What is a data mart? Let's just start there for a, a high level. Give me the elevator pitch, the 10,000 foot view. Yeah. So a data mart in Power BI um, allows you to do the types of analysis that are hard in Power BI. And so if you love Power BI and you love Power BI for its clicky, click, clicky, draggy, droppy data visualization goodness. You also know that doing ad hoc analysis and um, analyzing your data and sharing your data uh, isn't always the easiest. And so Data Marts provides SQL to Power BI for the first time, sort of the lingua franca of an analyst. So this means thousands of people who maybe don't know how to write DAX, don't understand Power Query, don't understand M and semantic modeling can still join their data together, um, analyze their data, do multi-table joins, have a big giant flat wide table and get insights very quickly. Uh, but the other thing that it does is it brings together all these different things that you would need to deliver BI at scale. So traditionally, you need to have data pipelines. You need to have some kind of relational store where you collect and you organize your data. And then lastly, you have a semantic layer. And Data Marts kind of unify all these things together. So when I say unified analytics, we give you the data prep built in. We give you a relational database that we optimize and manage for you. Um, and then lastly, we give you uh, a semantic model that's automatic and tuned. And we do things like, you know, cache the data for you. You don't have to worry about the storage mode. It's an import mode when it needs to be, direct query when it needs to be. And you kind of get the perfect sort of way to deliver analytics on organization. I can already see Seth just getting super. You said the word SQL. And Seth's heart started. I could see it. It was his heart was no. fluttering in the it's background. better than the intro. <laughs> I got I to gotta stick, stick with the program, man. I, I want to jump so far ahead right away, no. but I'll, I'll, I'll refrain. <laughs> that is a great introduction and i think this is a great piece of surface area that is around what we need in power bi i, I mean tommy you've been you, you've been dealing with some models seth i'm sure you have as well if you get those models that show up 
and inside the model there's like no relationships there's like 20 tables and they're all flat tables because what i and this is funny to me because this is typically indicative of when i see a sql developer show up to power bi and they're like hey i know how to do all the transformations i need i know how to make my facts and dimension tables i'm just going to make all the transformations upstream and just quickly load in these final tables and then build visuals on top of those tables and to some degree that's very effective in certain areas um it makes things render very quickly you're doing your processing upstream which is great so to have inside the ecosystem now of power bi to do this and and even you know one thing i really like about this and correct me if i'm wrong here charles when we're connecting or we're building or bringing data to the data mart we're mm -hmm. using power query to do so correct yep we're using a data flow um, a data flow okay yeah you you may you may have seen that on the roadmap for data flow is the ability to output data to different destinations. Yeah. Data Mart is kind of like the first precursor for that. So yes. um, you know, we're loading data from a data flow. Yeah. And then once we get data into the, the SQL database, that's the experience you see where you can like browse the tables, write queries, sort and filter your data. And behind the scenes, we're running SQL queries all the time for you, but you don't need to necessarily know that. Now, if you do have that SQL superpower, you can go nuts with the types of things that the types of analyses you want to write. So the, the one thing that you really said that really struck me, the first thing you said about data flows was the ability, the deviation away from clicky, clicky, draggy, droppy, so to speak, and not so much the deployment side. So I think mm -hmm. for all of us, when we've talked about data marks has always been that deployment, is this going to substitute our golden data sets and that deployment? But you started with the, almost that developer view I wonder if there's a reason for that. Was that part of the origin story of data marts? So uh, one of the reasons why we built data marts is because of you know the feedback here in the community. When you go and you look at um, Power BI Desktop in the Windows Store, if you go look at the number one request, the number one upvoted comment, it was "Give us SQL." And so that was about a year and some change ago. And you know we've worked to deliver SQL in Power BI, but we know the Power BI you know typical community these self-service analysts and developers want an end-to-end -end solution. So that's why data marts are more than just SQL. So while SQL is a big part, being able to write visual queries, being able to write SQL queries uh, and write code as well, we know that you know ultimately in Power BI, it's all about you know delivering visual analytics. And so that's a key part of you know why we delivered it kind of with this end-to-end -end point of view. So, but, so Charles, oh, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So. No, I guess I, I guess where I struggle is kind of right off the bat where you're describing who data marts is for, right? Like ad hoc analysis, shared data, like the SQL version to get access to the data behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and then and then it dovetails into you know bringing bringing things together that require scale and like producing the full BI package. So, who's the audience for mm -hmm. data marts, or is it does it span multiple audiences? So when you think about all the low code, no code experiences, we're building on the analyst audience who is used to office, right? So we use Power Query a lot here. We're, we're, we use a lot of, you know, what you see is what you get interfaces, data grids, being able to sort and filter your data. And you can do everything completely end to end in Power BI as an analyst in a data mart. Um, but at the same time, we know that a lot of creators are a little bit more technical and they do use SQL. And so these analysts, these business analysts that maybe are more technical can also be very comfortable in those same kind of capabilities. And over time, we know that, you know, there's BI developers and SQL developers, and we're, you know, additionally adding experiences every month to make sure that they feel at home as well. So eventually the, the world we kind of imagine is you have this today in, in enterprise, you have, you know, pro developers over here and you have citizen developers over here. And we see these worlds kind of converging where you have these fusion teams and people can bring the skills that they have and collaborate together and still build, you know, pieces of analytics value very quickly. So for sure, when you think about where it is in Power BI and right now who we're targeting, it's that analyst that, you know, maybe doesn't have access to a data warehouse, doesn't have access to Azure, doesn't have access to, you know, these powerful tools and capabilities. But now in one click, they can spin up, you know, ETL and a relational database and a semantic model. And they don't need to worry about all the ins and outs and an orchestrator to manage all these and, having to performance tune it, they can start instead worry about the hardest part about analytics, which is, you know, context. Was that part of the need from like, obviously you saw the Windows store that said, we need SQL. And then yeah. 
speaking of what you're seeing now, was that kind of the origin story where however you guys were in, like having lunch going, you know what would be cool? Like, is is that what this is meant to serve? Is that real true role of that combination or that fusion of the citizen developer and the pro code who does not, because there's a lot of people who don't have that access in Azure mm -hmm. data factor or subscription, but is still required to do a lot of those uh, functionality. So yeah. is, is, this is kind of the need kind of came from. We've, we've always kind of had this pattern in Power BI. So if you think about analysis services, right? This was something that was an awesome piece of technology, but we made it and democratized it for everyone when we brought it to Power BI. Um, okay. When you think about like, uh, data flows. ETL was really difficult. We used Power Query and brought that to a ton more of developers. Um, when you think about things like streaming data flows that we did, right? It was, it's a similar story where, you know, you had, you know, stream analytics, but how do you provide that same kind of capability experience so that folks that are, you know, less technical can still, with all the context they have, which is super powerful, you know, lead to some piece of analytics value. So data marts are kind of the personification of all those lessons we learned, as well as what you all tell us you need. And, you know, as things evolve, you're seeing a huge trend right now about, you know, unified analytics. So I want one single pane of glass to do all my analytics work. And I want to have a single source of the truth and discipline at the core, but then flexibility at the edge and, you know, patterns like data mesh and, um, you know, federated, you know, models and, you know, centers of excellence. We're trying to make sure that you have the right tools as a you know analyst, developer, and business person to just get your jobs done and analyze your data and make decisions. I like this story, I, and I think I, the vision that you're portraying here, I think resonates very well with me because, you know, working with newer clients, I mean, this is how the growth progression I see things working in organizations. You start with a, hey, let's do Power BI, great. We get comfortable, we down the desktop, it's things on local. Oh, I have a publish button. Let's okay, let's publish this. Boom. Now, immediately, we're, we're grabbing data from on-prem, we're doing some modeling, and now we're getting comfortable with cloud. And the success of that experience, how easy it was, how performant it has become, I can get a lot of basic things covered very quickly. That brought and drove a lot of adoption to this next layer of companies are now like, well, what do we do? We have more data. Where do we put it? Where's it going to go? And so the conversation for me as like a consultant in this space has been, Okay, well, now that you're comfortable with Power BI, let's talk about the other things you need to cloud. Your SQL servers, your your data yeah. warehousing, like what are the different sources you're talking about? So to me, it's a very natural progression, you know, drive adoption into being comfortable with cloud using Power BI and how great the experience has been. And so with that now comes this new conversation. And now I'm looking at data marts going, this is another great progression towards that end. You know, let's not talk about a single source. Let's talk about a, a central place or a location where we can grab and bring all of our our data tables together. Again, I'm I'm thinking the big architectural picture here because that's I like to architect, right? We got Power Query or data flows bringing data in. I've got that really rich editing experience. We can edit, and I'm I'm still a little sad here. And then and because you're on the call, there's maybe other Microsoft people listening here. Desktop hasn't gotten a great update in Power Query in a while, so I love <laughs> the Power. I love the Power Query experience online. It's great, but you know, bring me that experience in desktop. I, I get that's maybe not where we're always going, but then once you get the data to something, a table form, now what do you do with it? And then SQL becomes this great interface layer, transforming, merging, blending. It's a very well-known item and you can throw a stone and hit another SQL developer. They're everywhere. Yeah. And then now you've got the analysis services on part of, uh, as kind of like as a, a helper on this, right? You're building some, automation around going from those SQL tables directly into a model, a data mart, and boom, we're off to build reports. So this makes a total sense that you're bringing this under the same house, the same ecosystem. Well, and Mike, in, in, in Microsoft's defense, it is kind of your fault that they're not updating Power BI desktop anymore. So, so our <laughs> first true. episode, That's our very true. first episode of it this is my podcast, fault. Mike, I don't, it was like, basically it's like, I have a great first podcast. Everything's in the cloud, forget desktop. And Microsoft yeah. apparently listened. So well, but, you know, they're, they're taking a different approach, right? So now it's less yeah. around like, you know, data marts lets you build measures inside inside the that the data marts element, which is what my big complaint was with the whole, you know, why can't we just make Power BI desktop live in the cloud? You go, you can build reports in the cloud, but I can't make a measure. Well, now I get that feature that comes with data marts now. So now to me, this is another gap closer for me of where I'm getting closer to like, I can exclusively use the Power BI ecosystem entirely in a browser to do everything that I need. 
So more of a kind of an abstract question, right? So if 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 Data Mart serves the purpose right now, right out of the gate, um, in terms of helping out the analyst and advanced analyst with some SQL access to to source systems, and allows us to them to start building the the different components all within Data Mart's. To me, there's a lot of parallels in like how Power BI was released, right? Like it started off as uh, a, a tool that you could directly plug into the business. And, you know, those of us on the back end were screeching like, well, it's not enterprise ready. Like, so, uh, and then it grew into that, right? Significantly and then beyond, I think even my expectations, um, it's obviously like still um, a, a just released kind of capability, but it had, like, I think the thing that gets me excited is it has the capability to significantly shift how we architect things is this that same sort of kind of grow up story with this capability that we'll continue to see more of the, the features that allow us to enterprise it over time? Or you're saying, or, or Charles, is it ready to go? Like I, I should start re-architecting how, how I implement <laughs> things to your data flows completely. So, you know, we're in preview right now and we're in preview because we want to learn from you all. We want to make sure that our product is super robust, super compliant, super reliable. Mm -hmm. But this opportunity is crucial for us because this is where our customers get to tell us what's missing. How do you all want to actually architect and you know deliver these types of solutions? And then what do you need to you know make a data mart something that will help you do your job better? And so you know we want to make it super mature, super enterprise ready, and uh, at the same time we just released. So it is a bit of a journey. But what's nice about this is that. You know, customers get an opportunity to give us early feedback, try it, do POCs, uh, put it through its paces. And then they also get the opportunity to, you know, receive the value of us being a 100% web service. So we can release very quickly and be very agile to the requests of what people want. And then, um, you know, we can evolve this over time. So we want to make it super robust. It already supports a lot of the things in Power BI that you would expect, things like audit, things like deployment pipelines, um, things like, you know, multiple contributors. And there's other things like that we get because it's part of the SQL e ecosystem, like query store, uh, which is a very powerful capability inside of, you know, Azure SQL that allows you to, you know, monitor and measure your queries. Um, so there's a ton of things we want to do longer term uh, with data marts to make them, you know, a great place for, you know, more enterprise analytics as well. But, you know, being part of Power BI helps us also focus on the self-service aspect. And th in those areas where we're not as mature, I would just say that it's much more of a yet thing because we want to get there. Okay. Are so, you seeing? Yeah, go ahead. Are you seeing a, a shift in here? And and I could you know as Seth we talked about this in the podcast previously. Seth was looking at like a use case, right? There's there are certain teams in the company that have very con tight control about what data goes into the yeah. ecosystem, and mm -hmm. so I see this as being an example around where you can you can kind of create a workspace around yeah. a very specific sensitive data area of your company and kind of limit it to just that space, right? You may not be wanting to put a bunch of other things in the cloud or uh, you know, having a shared SQL server, whatever that may be for, for that reason. So it's a very niche potential security requirement around what these things are doing. So I mean, in saying that, right, in saying that there's potentially workloads here that you know, maybe this is like, like a, I'm thinking like financial, right? That's, those are the areas where people get most picky about things. There's a finance team, they love Excel, they need some stuff to get brought together. We have some systems we need to get data out of, but it's it's very controlled. We can't just let that data be shown to everyone. So in lieu of that, it, our data marts, maybe the vision here is, or maybe the short term goal here, are we, are we looking to lift other workloads off of other teams and bring it to data marts? Or is at least the, the initial play here is find workloads that are not being controlled, thinking Excel, SharePoint lists, other things that are like arbitrary, it still gets the job done for business. Mm -hmm. Are we looking to absorb those workloads into data marts? So maybe maybe it's a question around where does the workload come from? Are we looking to, to add workload or are we looking to move workloads from existing places? What are, you, what are your say, thoughts on that one? I would say it's not mutually exclusive. So okay. on the Power Query side, we have you know the power of hundreds of connectors where from any online service or database or file format, or even open protocols like OL, OLEDB, et cetera, uh, ODBC, I'm sorry, you can connect to your data, right? Mm -hmm. To then use cases where I have a SharePoint list, but it, it falls down here or there. 
to you know more enterprise use cases where I have a line of business application, maybe it's not in my you know cloud data warehouse, it's not something that makes sense, or I need it to be uh, isolated from a workload perspective. And you can totally say, hey, look, this organization, this business unit, this department can think about uh, their data as a product, and they can just build their sort of smaller universe of data that fits their needs. And then yeah. when they become, you know or get to a point where they need to share it. They have that capability to share it out, add folks inside of the workspace to collaborate as well. Okay. Um, but things can grow organically that way that can serve, like you said, specific compliance or geography requirements, as well yeah. as just the need for speed. Um, when you need that workload isolation and that flexibility at the edge, you know, you can create a data mart as simple as, you know, go to the workspace, click on new and say data mart. And Mike, I, I like that quote. I like that question because I'm thinking of this very much on where, what does this replace in the supply chain, so to speak of products and where do I use it? You're kind of saying, no, no, this is not part of the supply chain. We're actually going to move this department wise, like someone yeah. who may not be introduced to power BI or the platform. Well, uh, I look yeah. at it like from my perspective, like when I was learning SQL, I wasn't just showing up and be like, I know I didn't go take a class right. on it. I was like, give me access databases, right? I'm building my own little mini thing on my own that's kind of experimental and figuring things out and how it works. And so I was finding value from that and I was building applications on top of that. I see this as being to be a very similar route for other business users. We're, we're, we're drawing into the ecosystem here, people that understand data, how to shape it. You know, they're in, in some way, you already understand what facts and dimensions are. You may not have the technical training around that, but you, you get it. You know what needs to be visualized on the report or pages to get business done. And so I see this as being another really interesting, you know, I, you know, basically, uh, uh, you know, if I think about uh, access, Microsoft really isn't doing a lot of touting around keep, <laughs> let's make more access databases. There's, there's no cloud version of that, that of that standpoint. But to me, yeah. this, this feels a lot more robust and, and again, more geared towards that business user moving more towards that IT shop side of things. You know what's interesting to me that that I hadn't thought about until this conversation and what you were saying is as far as like obviously it's it's a mix of both is um I, I think we're all hammers and we try to you know hit hit nails right so it's automatically we try to fit this in oh, how do, how does this work uh, in enterprise but yeah. if the the thought here is I I think it data marts in general has been very disruptive to thought patterns because it does have an element of ex or it it combines a lot of the existing elements within Power BI. But I, I think it's a, a I think it's a really good because it it will allow us to centralize the conversation into like, hey, we're the data mart, the process flow that you want to create when you're doing business intelligence all revolves around data marts now. Like from the get go with with net new it's easier, but at the same time, rather than having random data sources, the wild west of, you know, how people are creating reports, there's there's a framework now that we can kind of rely on or reference with business users that I think starts to make sense in in nomenclature at least, right? So that the conversation is the same and starts to become the same in the organization. Yeah. I I mean, that's definitely one of the things that we're focused on, but I do want to call out that openness is another thing that we're really focused on. So I see some comments yeah. here in the chat that are talking about like XMLA, which is XML for analysis services, this sort of OG protocol that we have for being able to get access to your data. Yeah. And when you have the a data OG set, you also have, <laughs> yeah, you also have the, uh, the REST APIs that were released recently, right? But if yeah. you think about getting access to data, most tools, whether it's Excel, whether it's you know the BI tool of your choice, they also know how to write and understand SQL. And so when we're allowing these folks to build their own kind of, kind of universes of their data, giving them the ability to have a SQL endpoint where they can just get access to their data to do whatever else it is, but it's curated, they can trust it, they can endorse it, they have DLP or whatever other you know, Power BI controls we give them, is mm -hmm. one of the, I think, very powerful things for allowing the business to kind of own their data and think about it like a product. I'm sensing that it's still very flexible. You, like you said, it's in preview. So if I were to say, what does data marks look like a year from now? You're like, it's going to depend. But what I do sense, and I don't want to say this is concerning to me, but Seth said a really good point. This has been the most disruptive tool or product that's come out. Um, one of the, I remember back when cloud became a thing, when before we had, everything was in the cloud, your PC was your hub. 
And we've lived in the world where everything has a use case. Power BI desktop has a use case. Data flows has a use case. And then they said, oh no, your hub's now the cloud. Your PC is now just another device. Is data flows, is that kind of the envision uh, of the ideal state of this where Power BI desktop is kind of the, the king is um, taken off and now data marts are the central hub? Um. You know, I don't think that's the case. Uh, when you look at things like Office, Office has, for example, let's take Excel. Excel Online is an amazing product, uh, but there's still Excel on the desktop, and that makes a ton of sense. When you think about developers developing, some use VMs, but some also like, you know, their client applications that they, you know, right. uh, publish to the server. So I don't think that's going away. I do think there's a new class of folks, the Gen Zers, uh, the millennials, the folks that are, you know, way after that want to work in the web and they want experiences that are end to end and that are super simple, that are cloud first, and that don't require a lot of cognitive transfer switching between tools and devices and they can use on any device. And I think this is why you've seen us shift really hard to the web. But I would say that, you know, every software application is going to a SaaS model where, you know, a lot of those details, those implementation details are obfuscated for the user because folks don't like worrying about some of those uh, more difficult, hairy, details of how to get these things to work and stitch together end to end. So, so I will say that you'll see that continuing simplification of how you get from point A to point B with point B being like thinking about data as a product and getting some insights as fast as possible. Our job is to shorten that distance. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to see DNR continue to shorten that. Uh, yeah. Today, you may not be able to do a lot of the things that you might uh, want to do from an analytics perspective in data marts. But again, we like to think about it from a yet perspective. So you're telling me by Christmas, I'll have a data marts iPhone app. That I can build one on or no? Uh, that's that's so, I think I heard. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny you say that because I, it's I like because we're releasing it. today. Yeah, I know we're releasing today. We have a you know an iPhone app. Take a picture of a table. Automatically loaded yeah. data marts. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hilarious because when we were doing testing. You know, we test on a multiple a multitude of devices, and we had one of our developers, one of our engineering managers, actually test yeah. on an iPhone and say. It, I mean, it was very painful, but it did work on a yeah, smaller okay. screen. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, when we think about making this available to as many people as possible everywhere, you know, mobile could definitely be a really interesting story for us. I mean, I, I, there is another challenge here too that I see, like right now, if you're doing desktop, you're locked into a Windows machine. And there are clients that not are always Windows machine based. And there are departments that are, some some companies split the devices that you bring into the organization. Some of the IT mm -hmm. shop is using, you know, PCs and Windows computers. And then the marketing team or other parts of the company are using actual, you know, different computers, Macs or whatever, whatever other machines they are. And so to me, this is like an unlock key to some of that other uh, availability across different platforms. And so now it becomes less of a, um, I need to have the right computer. It becomes more about let's, and I, I'm going to go back to your, your point here, Charlie, you made it, you've said it twice now. And it's really resonating with me is your data is the product, the data of what you're producing. That is what we're talking about here. And so, um, we talked about this in the podcast a number of times that I've gone down when, at one of my old companies, I was working there. I'd walk down the aisle and I just, we had the, the picnic benches of, of people working together inside the office. So it was basically, we call it a picnic bench because everyone worked right side by side each other. And there was these long aisles of people working. And as I walked down the, the, the aisle, there's just Excel after Excel after Excel open on people's computers. And I thought, oh my gosh, everyone, people are acting like the data movers of, of mm -hmm. information. They, data is their product and it resonates very well. Yeah. Oh, I like this. This is really good. Yeah, it's, I think it's more interesting now when you think about this challenging economic climate. You've got folks that are trying to figure out what's going on and how do I sort of maintain and sustain. And then you have you know organizations that are saying, how do I take advantage of this and find the competitive advantage? And in either case, you're looking at the data, but then you've got like the fast movers, the slower movers, those that are kind of observing, but data is still at the core of all those decisions. And so like whatever we can do on the data mart side to make that easier is, is king for us. And that's what we're like super focused on. It's an interesting question coming in here from LinkedIn. I, I think this is probably an appropriate time to, to point this out. And, and Charles, you were saying, you know, searchability, discoverability of these data sets, you know, being, yeah. we talked earlier about, you know, making a specific lockdown area. But now yeah. we're also talking about, well, how do we share this? What's How do we make this discoverable to more parts of the organization? And the, and the question from LinkedIn kind of comes in as, you know, yeah. 
if you listen to like the Harvard Business Review and what they're what they're kind of touting, they're talking a lot about companies continue and will continue to have data silos. Exactly. How, how does this work? I mean, again, now that we have, I'm 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 thinking here, and again, I'm not trying to pick out your roadmap here, but I'm looking at this going. You know, there is a data hub already that's available mm -hmm. to us in PowerBI.com, and I'm thinking like. You know, right now I can go discover different data sets. I can see things across the organization, things that have been shared with me that I'm allowed to see. Yep. How do you see data marts fitting more of that organizational distribution of we've got teams that are working on data and we're breaking down these data silos. How do you see this working inside data marts now? Yeah, so the HPR article is, I think, exactly right. There's always data silos within an organization because context is king. And yeah. if you're in supply chain, you're talking about a particular problem, even if let's just say it's procurement, that may be a different type of problem that than the you know finance or sales teams are talking about. So the domain might be the same, but yeah. their contextualized view of the world is quite different and has different security requirements and everything else. So with that being like the known understood context, I think data marts help you because they, like you said, they're part of the data hub. So this means that we've already cataloged these data marts, and we allow them to be searchable and discoverable. But then we also help you secure and govern those things. So we give you controls to, you know, uh, be able to leverage these data marts, audit all the activities, secure them, and, you know, share the data. But then you can appropriately add, add additional business semantics to tell people what it is. You can endorse it. You can classify it and say this confidential data. And these are yeah. the types of things when you think about, like, how do we reduce silos? It's more about delivering a model where, um, you can you can deliver the right level of spokes, but you still have this hub control of, hey, here's all, all of our master data. Each one of these uh, you know, data marts can leverage that, but then when they need to bring their additional data, we can do that, and then we can still catalog, classify, and secure that data, and then endorse it in such a way where folks can discover it, and we don't have you know, these multiple versions of representations that are you know, competing. So, Data marts are expressly, I think, meant to lean into that pattern, but do it in a way where it's a win-win. Love it. This is good stuff. So, all right, oh, go ahead, Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very interesting the way this is going because I was very much going into this conversation and data marts with it. What is this going to replace in the Power BI world? But it's almost rather than it's going to do something better than data flows or this better than mm -hmm. desktop. It's almost yours what I'm hearing is, is kind of removing the shackles from powerbi.com where we're going to have this data set. And this kind of goes to what you're saying, where data flows are going to be pushed to other systems. Is that kind of the other part of this, where this is where data flows is so transformative? It's not just another product in Power BI. It's because it's going to reach other aspects of, in a sense, the uh, an organization's world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you think about it from the perspective of like data sets or semantic models, they're your metrics layer that people are talking about today. And then you think about, you know, data marts being this way to get unified analytics and SQL. And then you can think about data flows as an amazing way to do ETL. And from that perspective, right, like the data mart is just another destination. The Azure Data Lake storage capability is just another destination, right? A uh, data set could be another destination. There will be other things if you look at the public roadmap for what data flows are going to deliver in the future for other destinations. But I think it's all about how we make Power BI as a ecosystem more helpful to our customers for building data assets, whether that's you know ETL pipelines, whether that's you know analytic solutions for a department, a business unit, or a whole organization, or whether it's you know a semantic model and a metrics layer so that folks can describe what revenue is or you know what, what cogs are, what margin contribution is consistently and holistically. Like yeah. the whole idea is do more with data, Power BI will help you. I, I like where you're going with that one because that's a challenge right now. Right now, even even in the Power BI ecosystem, um, what is cost of goods? Defining what that term is, having a common library of definition and dictionary uh, items around what that means. That's, I mean, Tommy, you've worked on that a ton in, in your space, just trying to define the data catalog. Where do these measures come from? How do you build these measures? If you're building measures on top of these columns, what what should it be? What should be calculated when we mean these different terms? And outside just the desktop, or outside just the report, too, yes. Which I, I like this. Where does yeah. where does the where does the admin features of data marts come into it? So I mean, again, I'm thinking from this from two parts of the lens, right? I'm talking about like the business user who's coming in and saying, "I love this thing. This is great." 
what kind of admin controls are we having either now or what we're looking for in the future too? Because I'm so I'm thinking across this. There's to me there's this gaping hole inside the who uses what, and for me there's a huge challenge right now. The lineage piece of going from like a model down to the report elements. There's a massive gap between that I see right now of how do I know if I'm going to clean up a measure, if I'm going to take away a column. How do I know downstream I'm not going to kill a bunch of reports? And if I am, how do I identify what those reports and things are going to look like? How does is is Data Mart's thinking about this as like the you know there's oh well, so many That's thoughts. Like there's lineage tag legs. There's there's lineage tag lines already in the BIM file already. Like where does that fit? I feel like this would be a great opportunity to start adding more of those elements and giving better traceability all the way down to the report level, even visual level of where this stuff is being leveraged in. Yeah, so that's a great question. I think it's like there's multiple layers to this question, so I'll try to yeah. answer the best yeah. I can. <laughs> answer what you can. <laughs> you're seeing you're seeing some level of this, and we used to have the data set hub, and we, we renamed it to the data hub. Yeah. And at the same time, you've seen that when we came out with Lineage, uh, we said we're going to integrate with Microsoft Purview. And at the same time, you know that we've been investing in things like data loss prevention, and we now integrate with all the office MIP labels. Now, when you go to the data hub today and you go to like a data set, you'll notice that we're starting to expose more metadata of what's within that data set. So we now tell you what the table names are and other information, and we allow you to see and sort of explore that. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can kind of imagine where we're going with all this, because this is a common problem even you know in our own business. So uh, being able to reduce those silos, integrate with Purview, make sure that folks kind of get that full traceability is something that we're actively investing in. And you can just cool. bet that. Data marks will be a part of that. They already, they already are. Like they're already part of the data hub. They already integrate with the DLP, the sensitivity yeah. labels. They already yeah. integrate with endorsement, right? So if you want to certify and promote these things, you can. But there's more things we want to do. And like I said, just watch that data hub space because all the artifacts that are inside of Power BI, all those items, you're going to see continuing to have a compelling story over there. But then there's Purview that sits on top of all of this and yes. all the other documents that you're creating and enriching, and uh, we want to have a great story there too. So I think that's part of your question, which is like, yeah, hey, how do we look at it from the admin perspective over there? But then more generally, we have heard feedback from customers. They wanted more controls over who have who can create data marts, um, having the ability to, to enable them for select users, looking at capacity controls. Uh, there's an idea. And yesterday we published a new blog. We talked about how we're looking at that idea. That idea. So. We're talking with a number of customers trying to figure out what's the right way to deliver that right level of control and management and um, monitoring capabilities, but at the same time, ensuring that folks get that flexibility at the edge that is kind of the ethos of self-service. I've got a, I got a riveting question now. Is it data marts with a capital D <laughs> or data marts with a lowercase d? What, what is the right way? We, how do we write this thing? Is it, is it a single when, word? Is it two words? <laughs> one word. <laughs> matter. One word. Uh, one word. And, it is generally capitalized at the start of a sentence and then lowercase everywhere else. Okay. Um, so nice. And it's the way we talk about it. It's data mart and Power BI. So yeah. the data mart is the thing, but you know, obviously English has different ways to describe data marts when you're talking. So about confusing. It. <laughs> so. I, I do think it's wise that you're picking data mart as the name of this. I mean, like you could Microsoft could have picked any number of names in this domain, um, and the fact that this is a feature called data marts. I think Apple describes what it does, but when you think about what a data mart is trying to do, I'm trying to think. Of, I'm trying to rectify where this sits in, like the enterprise data reporting. So you know the EDW. Where does that sit? I mean, that, that can have a lot of data and not be star schema. And then mm -hmm. we can start talking about data marts or e data sets. And then as we get closer to like the subject matter area, I'm finding incredible amounts of value with more and more aligning to a star schema. The, the farther yeah. I go down towards that report side of things, the, the schema, the meta schema, uh, yeah. the schema detail of, of what you're building there inherently lends itself to facts and dimensions. Uh, that's what yeah. I want to start conforming to. So I, I really like this as data marts because when you look at the classic architecture of where people build things, you can have the central EDW and they have all these data marts hanging off of that that do a, a lens or a little view of what's coming out of the massive pool of data that is the data mart. I think this aligns very well. I, I think the vision here and the naming of it for once, Microsoft did a good job naming this one. <laughs> so I hope you had some influence there to, to, to aptly name it data marts. 
<laughs> and we have we have an awesome naming team. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just a big it's a big fishbowl, and there's just a lot. You know, everyone put in a name, and we can pull it out. <laughs> we, I would say our marketing team is world class. They've done a really good job with helping yes. us deliver data marts, and we've learned a lot. Right, like every single release that we do in Power BI, I think our whole organization takes pride in learning. So every time we release something really special to customers, they've given us the feedback of what we could do better, and we try to just improve on that the next time. So um, you know, data marts is the culmination of learning from things like you know our premium Gen two, premium per user how we launch data flows, how we launch Power BI as a whole. And, you know, very thankful for all the comments, all the feedback, because we're continuing to learn. And this is kind of a journey. So uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun ride. So um, I think, like I said, this conversation is really expanding, I think, what data marks could be. But for the developer, and let's say a year from now, this ideal state mm -hmm. of not so much the product, but if I'm a developer now, should this be part like ingrained with my vocabulary, just like DAX Power Query is, or d is that like a, a necessity if you say I'm a Power BI developer, or is this really kind of like you like you said it's it's not so much on the hierarchy, it's almost like on the on another on another lane. Uh, that's a very much a depends question, but I would say um, we're not we're not delivering data marts to. Um, you know, better or best any other thing inside of Power BI. If you're already using data sets, we feel like there's a complementary story with data marts. You can do more with your data when you leverage a data mart and a data set in conjunction. That's why we auto-generate a data set because we're all in on the metrics layer, the semantic layer, having business semantics, be able to define measures. Same time, data flows are awesome. There is a great story with, you know, being able to have the control for ETL for other things. Any data mart is just another source. Makes total sense over there. And then it just comes down to what is your use case where a data mart makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. And if you have those ad hoc analysis needs and you're already seeing, we'll call it spread mark proliferation in, inside of your organization, and you're seeing a slowdown in the speed with which, you know, your teams can build analytic solutions, data marts seem like a really good fit, but you don't have to take my word for it. It's free during the preview. You can go try it. It's completely self-service, but you still have the right controls to like monitor and manage the thing. So you can kind of learn as you go too to figure out how does it fit. But we, we kind of see it being a very synergistic thing with what you're doing in Power BI already. But if you take a step back outside of Power BI, there's all these developers that have trouble getting started with Power BI. And this is another way to make it easier for them. And then if they're using SQL, like holy cow, they now have a, a first class way to do that. And we know that you know in school, there's a ton of analysts that are learning SQL. And then there's you know decades of years of analysts and developers and uh, you know professionals that are amazing SQL talents, and now they can be at home. They don't have to figure out XMLA, DAX, and all the other goodness over there. So that's Seth. I, th Seth I, I has think the decades there. I think you're, no, right. I think I you're think... referring to Seth as the decades old. <laughs> yeah, the decades old guy. The, 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 I think I made a, a comment on a previous podcast, but Charles, you, you know you've opened like Pandora's box by introducing a SQL interface because <laughs> now you're going to have like perpetually and forever people are, that are going to be like, well, you need to do this and add this because this is what I like. And where's SMS, my SQL profiler? Right? Where's, <laughs> my, where's my da 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 da? <laughs> what are, what are, what would you, Charles, what, like, what, what's your recommendation for people to get stuck into data marts, right? Mm. Is it, is it when they're going to be developing existing solutions versus try to, um, or I should say, Question. when they're developing new solutions versus trying to morph an existing solution into data marts? So I'm always of the adage of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if it's working for you right now and it's adding a lot of value, why would you disrupt what works really well? Instead, I think data marts an opportunity for you to think critically about pain points that you have and say, hey, these pain points, does data marts solve some of those? And then separately, these new areas where I'm getting all these analytics requests, do I have an opportunity to deliver some level of innovation? And what we're betting on is that in those cases, you can do the types of analytics needs that you want uh, much faster. Uh, it's completely web-based, no software is required. So that's one instant advantage. If you wanna build a data set today, uh, you need some software and you have some computing requirements on your PC and it has to be a PC. Um, but then there's all the components of the cognitive transfer of learning how to publish something to the web, how the web service works in conjunction with all this. So we tried to make a simpler experience over there, but then you just have new analytics experiences. 
So this ability to write queries and not have to model your data and use SQL is brand new. And we have other things planned around that explicit experience because when you talk to users today and you talk about self-service, the, the next thing they often say is you built this canned model for me and this really sweet report, can I create a new report? And they're going up this hierarchy of like self-service. And the next thing they say is, I liked that report over there. And, and then you introduce the data model and they say, okay, I like that report, that measure, that model over there. And I wanna combine it with some data I have. Now you introduce composite models. Then they say, well, this is the golden data set and I have this composite model. They start to build all these complex things, but they're really trying to, in some cases, answer ad hoc business questions. And yes. with something like a data mart, this can be a lot easier. You can remove some of those layers if that's the need. At the same time, we lean in 100% towards all those patterns. Data marts work really well, composite and proxy models. Uh, but when we talk about the innovation and like the business need, I think that's what should drive using the data mart, not like, hey, this is a new shiny thing for Microsoft and you should go try it out. Yeah, and and I'm not looking at it from the, the, the hey, it's a new shiny thing. It's, yeah. it's due to the capabilities that it has, that it, it mm -hmm. puts it front and center of like, okay, this is gonna change potentially how I, I want to do things. I guess the the challenge or, or feedback I would, I would say in the yet unreleased best practices area <laughs> is mm -hmm. if, if I'm thinking about the amount of information that a business user is now forced to learn within the Power BI ecosystem, mm -hmm. Data Mart simplifies that, but I also have to get people to understand how to utilize them versus what they've already learned, right? So like I'm yeah. I'm increasing the amount of information I need to convey to a wider audience yeah. for, where whereas that's why I'm asking around the, you know, with existing solutions, mm -hmm. do we need do we need a path in there to get them into data marts as well? So we're teaching one thing, right? As opposed to an ever layering thing of seven different ways you can implement things and people re having to figure out how to do that all the time, like know them all, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's that's good feedback. And it's not feedback we haven't heard. We're, we're kind of thinking about how can we make that journey easier? Because in Power BI, we have a lot of stuff. And with mm -hmm. all that stuff, yeah, there's there is a lot of stuff. To do things. Right. <laughs> so right. we're thinking about like, how can we make it easier for customers to know sort of when to use what? And this is something that we're kind of actively brainstorming. Um, you know, there's lots of different avenues where you great call it on the best practices. We call it out also in the docs of saying we're working on that because we know we've heard, hey, <laughs> I read that today. That's yeah. what I said. <laughs> yeah. but, but separately, you're right. It, it can be challenging um, for folks to kind of know when to use what. And our, our general goal is when you think about Office, you have Excel, you have Word, you have PowerPoint. We want to make it that easy of a selection process. Um, now, at the same time, in an Office document, you can, you know, have a tie into another document. You can embed in one and things like this. So we're thinking about those type of experiences to make things easier as well. Uh, but that'll take us time. So in the meantime, we have to be able to describe our our products in a very coherent. Use this is what you should use and why. And we're working yep. on that. Okay. As soon yeah. as I can, as soon as I can open up a T SQL command prompt in PowerPoint and can write a SQL statement, <laughs> will return to me data into PowerPoint. I think we have a winner. I think that that's that's the nail in the coffin. The competition can't hold up when I'm writing so saying in PowerPoint. Creating my Excel tables in Word is not best practice then. Okay, so I, I see where we're going. Well, so this is, like I said, I, the, the expansion here, If give me a number of, if you had, there's $100 of development time to spend on data marks. And it's, you can divide it up e either between the actual, inner, like the use of the tool of building a data mark or the output of where it's going to be located where do you think that investment is right now? Because it's seeming more and more over this conversation, there's more of a budget or more resources being spent on where data marts can be, in a sense, accessed, rather than the actual building the data mart itself. Um, that's a good question. So I would say right now it's pretty even. Okay. So in the last update, you saw we made a bunch of improvements to like the ETL, just getting data yeah. into the data mart. Yeah. Um, but then we also made some experience to consumption as well. And then separately, connectivity is something that we're, we're working to improve. We've heard a lot number of customers say, hey, I want to connect a you know, Jupyter notebook and write Python against this thing, get data out and uh, you know, design a predictive algorithm and you know, maybe deploy that somewhere else and use the data mart as a source because this has all the business context. Analytics is all about context. This model is going to be great. Awesome. So we're kind of investing, I would say, across the board. And if you think about it, we have to do that because yeah. you have the creators that are you know building these things, but then there's 
the consumers that need the right experiences inside of it. But you can't sort of balance in one way or the other. Otherwise, you know, if you don't balance on the creator side enough, people won't be able to create these things fast enough to serve the consumers. And if there aren't the right level of consumer features, then you're creating this thing that's kind of just an orphan out there uh, mm -hmm. in terms of all your other, you know, analytics artifacts. So we have to do a good job of balancing. And I'd say we're doing a pretty decent job, but there's a lot of ideas out there. And so the, the nice thing is that we're in a time in our you know internal planning cycle where we're going through semester planning. So we kind of deliver things in you know, these semesters so all the ideas that people are voting on, we literally look at, and then we take a cut of those and we go build. So we're kind of looking at those top ideas to drive us to the promised land. And I would say even there, it's evenly distributed. So you'll see like DML and DDL are one of the biggest requests for customers. And DML are things like really? procedures, right? And table value functions. <laughs> uh, but then, um, you know, Creating tables is also one of those, right? So you can go to from quickly from creation to consumption just on that one. And same with DDL. Uh, so this is definitely how we want to invest in the future is make sure that we're evenly distributed across all those things. Uh, if you feel like, why do you say that you think we're, do you think we're kind of balanced one way or the other? So it's it, funny you say that. Uh, to me, like I said, it all goes back to the, like, what does this do better than the products already out there or has mm -hmm. no reason to exist in my life? Like if yeah. it's worth creating a data flow and a query editor and it's worth me building a model than desktop, to me, it has no reason to exist or to go into implementing any solution. Um, but the fact that we're talking about not just this as something that exists in the Power BI pipeline, but in the organization's pipeline. Like, again, you're talking about the expansion to other places. That to me is the, the in a sense, that star or where it really is unique, where it really can play a pivotal role in what I could and see in the different solutions. So. Well, and I, I got to give you tons of credit here, right? There's yeah. been uh, some good feedback in the community around, you know, being able to create create and save multiple queries. So using the SQL statements, saving those yeah. SQL statements inside the, the library that is the data right. mart. Yeah. We've yeah. talked a lot about on the podcast, like, hey, are we building data? Or are we building reports? And I, I, I can't remember the number of times I've seen this, where people come in and ask for, hey, I need, a, I need this report. Okay, let's talk about the report. It's this table, has all these columns. Okay, to me, that's a different kind of request. That's a request I need access to data versus I need insights of the data. And so, this, to me, what you just described, and, and I had this epiphany when you were talking there, Charles, around how this sh changes the game there to some degree, because now I get capabilities that are very SQL-esque in nature. I can meet more of the demand around writing my own custom SQL queries or endpoints that are going to let me attach directly to those things. I have to imagine there's going to be some kind of like snazzy thing that kind of comes out with where, where Excel is going to be able to connect into data marts, hopefully in the future, where... You're able to get stuff out of there as well and look at tables and get and get custom data out yeah i mean there's right. there's an endpoint for it so i think that makes sense so i really like this idea of like well what are we what is the real use case of what we're doing are right. we building mm -hmm. you an insight or are we giving you access right. and this is another neat surface area point that i see here that uh i really like how this is this is forming so i'm really excited to see the development there yeah, and how many times have we said on the podcast, I, multiple times, our job is not just to build a report. If that's all we're doing, we're failing at our job. Our I job agree. is to help people measure what matters yeah. and to try to answer their questions. So, yes. yeah. and I, I think that, yeah, Mike, you kind of said it perfectly. Ah, you're just, you're just trying to you be know. nice, Tommy. Mike so, DiCarlo. Yeah, I don't agree with any of that. <laughs> 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 so, so, so Charles, just from, from a PM perspective on the team, mm. Yeah. Kind of a, a question to you. What what is your favorite part of data marts? And secondarily, like what was the most challenging aspect of getting data marts released? Um so I answer the challenging aspect, time, definitely the most challenging aspect. Uh, this is something I think customers have wanted in some form or fashion for years. And I think technology finally got to a point where we could deliver this in a way that made sense to customers. Like this is completely sassified. But at the same time, there's a bunch of things we want to do as PMs. Like we're chomping the bit to deliver as much value as possible. But yeah. we have, you know, the realities of the real world setting in to say like, well, you need to be thoughtful about like how we release those things. Um, so that's that. And then your other question was. What is your favorite part of data marks? I really, I really like the, 
the experience of once you land in a data mark, you can explore your data without writing any code. And the fact that you can kind of preview it, sort and filter your data, and then graduate to a query, it feels like a very natural way of like looking at my data if I'm in Excel or something else. And this is how, um, if I didn't know how to write code or if I was just trying to understand more about my data, you know, Mike, when you talked about just getting access to the data, this is where mm -hmm. I would start. And yeah. then the next place I would probably start is I'm going to write a query and just kind of explore the data. Maybe it's a VLOOKUP or something else. Now I can kind of do it visually or through SQL. And that's where those new experiences that we have planned will get even more powerful around uh, doing more with those types of things. So definitely the queries is the area where I'm most excited for the future. I think you know, Darini on our team and our whole engineering team are doing a great job of delivering incremental value over there. And you can imagine things like views, stored procs, all the other requests that are out there, we'll table value functions will make the use cases for this even greater. So, you know, power apps, power automate, data-driven alerts, like there's a lot of potential things that we can do. And this is why I say, please keep voting on ideas. Let us know what's most important so we can kind of prioritize these. If there was a good time of year for folks to vote, it would literally be now, because this is right before we go into semester planning. So like, nice. very, very, very much appreciated all the votes. Awesome. And for those of you who are looking for, are you guys, just to make sure I'm clear on this one, this is still ideas.powerbi.com. Yep. for where we're putting submitting ideas. So it's still part of the ecosystem. There's not a datamarts.powerbi yep. or ideas.datamarts. It's all ideas.powerbi.com. And I believe there's a flag now, if you're creating ideas, you can flag things. Is it flagging? Can you flag things for datamarts? How, how, do how do we make issues or add ideas around so you can catch it quickly? Asterisks. So what, I, what we do is we just go and look at the site, we comb it. And then we yeah. look for anything that's got the keyword of data mart in there. So if you want right. us to find your idea, just add the keyword data mart in there somehow. Perfect. Data mart, it's data mart. One word. Big um, D or little D, doesn't matter. You can, it'll, it'll find both. It doesn't matter. Well, lowercase um, everything and just search it. <laughs> that's the big thing for us is if you throw a data mart in there, we're going to look at the idea. And we've, we try to go and respond to all the hot ones. Yeah. Um, so this is something that's really important for us. And the I think the opportunities are endless. So this is where everything that you all tell us is you know, really, really important. I really hope that you're your funneling. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It does. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I love it too. Right. Because, uh, I 100% I agree with that natural progression. We were actually just talking about this in, in terms of uh, us kind of seeing that in Power Query as well. Like you have an interface that leads people to, you know, finally get into advanced editor and M, right? And and feedback from maybe a different PM would be, it'd be great to have that in DAX as well, right? Like kind of the, the, the lead in to the more challenging things. But mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fantastic experience to, to lead business users into something that, um, like SQL, that is a, a, a language many people know and that they'd be able to pick up pretty easily as well. So Love obviously, it. yeah, my, my last question is obviously it seems very flexible where it's going to go. But if you and the Data Mart team a year from now, August 31st, 2023, are high-fiving because of the success of Data Mart, what do you think are going to be those components? Is it going to be the volume of use? Is it going to be the actual things built in? What, Where you're at now, what does success look like in a year? The thing that we are really focused on is usage satisfaction. So when customers are using the product, what do they tell us is good about it, what is bad, and how would they overall rate the product? So we look at things like NPS, we look at things uh, that are all about our customer satisfaction. And if that's high, I think we'll feel pretty good. Yeah. Uh, customers have been pretty vocal about like what's frankly either missing or are things we could do better, which is awesome. That's the feedback we need to hear and we want to hear. But you know, in a year from now, we want to make sure that that product is meeting their expectations and they tell their friends about it. This is the most important like moniker of like, did we do our jobs? Like like adding a save button, maybe. They have it. They they just they, they did? did. It's there. Where you can that? save your you can save your SQL queries now. There, man. No, 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 no. Save. save the data mart. Or yes, the at data least mart, it's saving. The data mart is auto saving, but the 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 key thing that we could do to make that experience better is to let you know when it's saving. So that's that is uh, feedback. Yeah. That will help. Yes. yes. I will be putting my idea in if, right if, after this. If we could add a little, you know, three and a half inch floppy hard drive icon somewhere on the page yeah. that lets me. This is funny to me because my son is young. And he's never even seen one of these three and a half inch floppy drift yeah. disk things. And yet still in applications today, I still see the save icon as be that little that little disk, yeah. the little disk. When you, when you, when you ask the younger generation, they tell you that's the save button. 
Yeah, they there's don't even no know other, it's, a, it's an, There's no it's other a, context of why that would be a floppy right. disk or anything else. <laughs> yes. um, it would be it's amazing, amazing if they changed it, though. Oh, man. Yeah. We're, 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 we're fastly approaching this era, and, and you know, low-code, no-code solutions are here to stay. It's, it's, it's the way of the future. And I, I look at... I love looking at this, these feature sets and things that are that we're building now, and looking at how my my kids, my generation behind me will, will be consuming these kind of products and tools. Man, it is so cool. Yeah. Programming the way it is seen today will not be the same way it is seen five, yeah. maybe even ten years down the road. It's going to be very different. And so I really like where this is going. So, um, well, I, I kind of want to wrap here a bit. This has been an amazing conversation. It's gone very quick for me. It's been we're already at an hour already. Uh, everyone, thank you very much, Charles. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, we know you're a busy guy. You said time was your issue, and we have carved out an hour of your time to hang out with us. So <laughs> thank you so much for doing that with us. Um, we really yeah. appreciate it. And maybe maybe we should do some more of these. We'll thank maybe do some more me. focused areas. I love it. Oh, with that, totally. we've burned sure. through a perfectly good hour. Data Mart's team. Yeah, we, yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you for all your hard work, and we're looking forward to more of these things. We should uh, We should do more uh specific use cases and you know releases we'll we'll jump in here and do more talking about this stuff everyone thank you so much we'll see you next time